Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE refrigerator evaporator fan motor grommet. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new evaporator fan motor grommet. The evaporator fan motor grommet goes onto the evaporator fan motor to help prevent vibration. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's torn or damaged and you're getting a lot of vibration from the motor. In order to get to the part, we have to open up the freezer door. We have to take out all the freezer shelves so we can get access behind the back panel. To get this upper one out, all you have to do is lift one side of it and then push it that way and that'll let the other side come out Then you can lift it up and pull it out. This small one here, all you have to do is lift up on it and pull it out. And all the remaining shelves, all you have to do is pull out the rails and lift out the baskets. Next, we're going to remove some parts to make it easier to get the back wall out. We're going to take out these two upper rails on this side. We're going to use a Torque 15 driver to remove the screws that hold it in. The front one you're going to have to pull the rail out a little bit to get this hole aligned with the screw. You may have to move it around, push it back in. Once you get it lined up, then we can take the screw out. You want to make sure you hold on to the rail too as you're taking the screw out so, you, so it doesn't drop. The lower one is done the same way. Now we can remove this back panel, it's held in by a couple clips. You want to make sure that you pull straight up on it and that will release it from the clips. If you try to pull it outwards, you'll end up breaking it. Now we can remove the light shield. There's a locking tab on each side that you have to press in to release. Once you have it released, all you have to do is lift it out of the back panel. Next we can take the light bulbs and the sockets out. The light bulbs you just want to unscrew and set somewhere so they don't get broken. Now there's a little tab on the light socket right here that you can just press with your finger. Once you have the socket out, you can just reach in and disconnect the wiring harness. All you have to do is pull it off. The other one comes out the same way. Now we can use our quarter inch nut driver to remove the four screws that hold the back panel on. Now we can pull the back wall up. You have to first push it down a little bit to release the tabs up here and then we can pull it out on the side we took the rails off. Now that we have the lower panel off, we're going to remove all the upper stuff so we can get behind the upper panel. We're going to pull out the ice bin. All you have to do is lift up and pull it, on the, pull it out of the rails. Now we can unplug the ice maker. We're going to reach in and pull up on the cord. You may have to reach in with a long flathead screwdriver and release these little locking tabs so you can pull up on the cord. Once you have them released, the plug should just come out. The ice maker is held in by these two quarter inch screws. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to take them out. Now that you have the screws removed, we can pull the ice maker out. All you have to do is lift it up and pull it out of the freezer. Next we can remove the auger motor assembly. It's held in by four screws. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to take them out. With the screws out, we can lift it up and pull it forward and then kind of rotate it down so we have to hold it up while we reach in there and unplug it. 
it's just a normal plug. All you have to do is squeeze each side and unplug it. Now that we have it unplugged, we can pull the assembly out and set it aside. Now we can reach in with our quarter inch nut driver and loosen the three screws that hold this bracket on. We don't have to take them all the way out, just loosen them and lift the bracket off. Before we try to pull this back panel off, we want to take this cord out from the back wall. We're going to take a small flathead screwdriver and press these tabs in and then press the socket back behind the panel. Once you have that out of the way, then we can take the back panel off. The back panel is held in by four screws, two on the top, two on the bottom. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to take them out. Once you have the bottom two screws out, you want to pull the bottom of the panel out very carefully so it doesn't catch on any of these wires or this copper tube. Now we can reach in and pull the back panel out so we have access to the parts. All you have to do is pull it down behind those two silver brackets. Once you get it down, you can turn it and pull it out. Now that we have everything out of the freezer, we have access to the evaporator motor. We can remove the fan blade from the motor and the little shield. All you have to do is reach in and pull them straight up and they'll come off. The fan blade might be a little tight, but it should come straight up. Then we can remove the two screws that hold in the bottom half of the bracket. It's a quarter inch nut driver. The second screw you just have to loosen up enough so you can get the motor out. All you have to do is let it drop down and you can lift the motor out and swing the bracket out of the way and we have access to the lower grommet Then you can drop the motor out all the way and we can take out the upper grommet. Both these grommets are the same so make sure that you when you change them you probably want to change both of them. To get the upper one out all you have to do is peel it out and the bottom one comes out the same way. Here's the old evaporator fan motor grommet next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new evaporator fan motor grommets in, all you have to do is press them in just like you took them out. Put the lower one in first, and then we can put the upper one in. Once you have it in place, we can rotate the motor around and lift it up so the shaft goes through. and hold that in place while we spin the lower one around and set it in place and then we can tighten down this screw and replace the other one. We can put the screws back in with our quarter inch nut driver. Don't forget on this side we have to put the screw through the ground and wire grommet first and then we can put it back into the bracket. We're going to put the motor shield back on. It slides down all the way just above the grommet. You don't want it touching the grommet. Just right above it. And then we can push the fan blade on. The little spring clamp goes down. And when you push it down, make sure it goes down all the way until you can't push it down any farther so it's sitting in the right position. Now we're going to put this back panel on. We're going to angle it. We're going to put it in right here underneath the light switch and go back and up behind the brackets. And halfway up we're going to stop and put the plug in and then we can put it the rest of the way in. Now that we have the wire harness in there, we can go up the rest of the way and put the screws in. Now that we have it all the way up on the top, we can make sure that 
the feet aren't caught on the bottom anywhere and push it all the way back to the back wall. On the bottom half, you want to make sure that your light socket wire harnesses come out of the holes. Once you have those in place, you can lift up on it a little bit and you may have to move this little copper wire, make sure you don't bend it. And then you can press the two mounting points up against the back wall so we can put the screws in. With the panel in place, we can use our quarter inch nut driver to put the screws in to hold it down. Now we can put the bracket on that the ice maker mounts on. It goes on these three screws that we loosened but didn't take out. So all you have to do is set it down on these. And then we can use our quarter inch nut driver to tighten them down. Now we can put in this auger motor assembly. We have to reconnect this plug with the one on the back wall and then lift it up onto the mounting brackets. So we're going to guide it up in there with one hand and plug it in with the other. With the motor in place, we can put in the four screws that hold it down. We're going to use our quarter inch nut driver to put them in. Next we can put the ice maker back in. You want to lift it up into its position and make sure that the fill hose goes in the fill cup and that it sets on its little shelf. Then we can put the screws back in and plug it back in. Then we can reach up and plug the ice maker in, making sure that it snaps in and locks in place. Now we can put the back panel on. In order to get the back panel on, you want to put it in an angle just like we took it off. And once you get the one side in, then you can rotate the other side in. And then we can lift it up and put the screws in. Once you have it in place, you want to lift these tabs up so they go behind this other panel. And then that will line the holes up so we can put the screws back in. Now we can reconnect the sockets and put the light bulbs in. All you have to do is plug the sockets in. Make sure they go all the way in and get a good connection. And then we can snap it back into the housing. The one on the other side is done the same way. And then we can screw the lights back in. To put this trim piece in, we want to make sure that these tabs right here go behind those little locking tabs on the wall. To put it back in, all you have to do is set, it up, set those tabs a little bit above the ones that are on the back wall, and then you can lower it down into place. Now we can put in the side rails for the shelves. We're going to use our Torque 15 driver to do it. We're going to drop one in there. And then line it up with the hole and put it in. Before you have that one tightened down, we're going to put in the front one and make sure it goes in the hole good. Once you have the front one in and tight, we can do the back one. The upper rail is done the same way.
Now that we have the rails in, we can put the light cover back on. To get the light cover in, you want to make sure that these two lower tabs go into the hole in the back wall. And then you can rotate it up and snap the upper ones into place on each side so it locks in. Now we can put all the freezer baskets back in. All you have to do is line them up with the shelves and put them in. The lower one just slides into place. The upper ones, you have to pull the rails out, make sure that the basket rears go underneath these tabs, and then make sure that the four posts go into the holes right here. Once you have it on, you can push it back in, and the other two are done the same way. The upper two shelves just kind of sit in place. This one, all you have to do is set it on top and slide it back. The upper one's a little bit different. We have to put it into the two holes and make sure it goes all the way up against the wall, then lower it down, and then push it into the other side. Now we can put the ice bin back in. To put the ice bin back in the freezer, all you have to do is line it up with the slides and push it back into place. Now that we have the part installed, we can close the freezer door, plug it back in, and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.